And I'm saying you can read this book, and you need to read this book, the whole book. God gave it to us. If all we needed was Paul's epistles, that's all God would have preserved for us. He gave us the whole book. You need to read it. You need to study it. You need to meditate on it. And what you need to do is always, first of all, consider what Paul said. Paul said, consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things, 2 Timothy 2, 7. So I get grounded in the doctrine for this age in which I'm living. So then when I'm reading outside of Paul's epistles and I come across something that doesn't line up with what Paul said, Paul said, I can eat whatever I want, praise God. Moses said, you can't have shrimp. I've, well, I'm going to rightly divide the word of truth and eat the shrimp. You understand? Because I can't follow both. That's a distinction, right? I'm not under the dietary law. So I can rightly divide the things that are different. But there are many, many, many things I come across. In fact, more things that are connected than are divided. There are many things I come across that still apply today. And if I neglect the rest of the Bible, I'm missing out big time. Man, I love going into Psalm 19, for example. One of my favorite passages. And uh, I've been studying, when we've been going through the book of Genesis, I, I've tried to show you historically, doctrinally, dispensationally, but also practically, there are things in Genesis that apply today, obviously. We need that. So when you come across something that is the same, apply it. When it's different, rightly divide it. It's not that difficult. The simple rule is what God has divided, leave divided. What he's connected, leave connected. <laughs> And don't go to one extreme or the other. You have what's going on in the professing church is preachers are ignoring the divisions. And all they want to do is apply, apply, apply. Then you have people go to the other extreme. In response to that, they overcorrect and say, all we're going to do is talk about divisions. We're not going to apply anything. Man, I see, I get it from both sides. I got some of my brethren in the grace movement say, Osteen's still a Baptist. He just says he's, I, I never said I, I preached the grace of God. I never called myself anything for the record. You never hear me say I'm a mid-axe, Pauline, blah, blah, blah. I don't do all this label. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I never called myself, I never signed up to be in anybody's movement. People say, well, you're not in our movement. I never wanted to be. All right? I recognize the body of Christ in the local church. I don't recognize these movements of men. So on one hand, they say, oh, he's still about, he preaches practically from other passages, and he's a legalist because he actually expects people to live right, you know. <laughs> and they say that with a whiskey in their hand, you know. I can't believe Osteen, you know. He's acting for alcohol and everything. Now, on the other hand, because I rightly divide, you got some of my Baptist brethren say, oh, you're a hyper -discipline. You know what? All y'all can go fly a kite. I'm just trying to follow the Word of God. Okay, and that's what I want our church to do. We don't have to sign up for either side. One of these days, I'm going to preach on why I'm not a Baptist, and I'm going to follow that up with why I'm not in the grace movement, because I don't want to have nothing to do with either one. Amen. All right, let's stand if you would, please. End on a good note.